Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit different video today than you guys are used to getting from me. And I think with what's going on in the world around us today, and I'm sure we're all aware of what I'm talking about. So I wanna talk a little bit about the difference between how we can use our constitutional silver versus our three nines fine silver in a um, societal breakdown situation. Now I wanna warn you, I'm gonna paint a pretty bleak kind of stark and maybe to some people kind of a terrifying scenario, which is all it is, just a scenario. So if you're interested in any of that, if you're brave enough, I should say, to continue, then um, stick around. Okay, so we all remember Katrina. Uh, if you didn't live through Ka Katrina about 10 years ago, you definitely witnessed what was going on on the television when we saw the images and the harshness of the conditions that people had to endure until help arrived. Okay, so just imagine that. That is the scenario I will be discussing hypothetically um, in this video, but only on a much larger scale, nationally, if not global scale, and for a much longer period with there being no structured end in sight. I think it's important to talk about that to kind of give you guys an idea of why I think it's important to stack both kinds of silver, 90% silver, but I believe that three nines fine silver has a specific part to play in a situation or scenario like that, that goes beyond 90% silver. And we'll discuss that later on in the video, but I promise you that ending is gonna be positive Cautionary, but positive. So uh, just stick with it. Grocery stores are gonna gonna run out of supplies within hours. We've seen that when you know natural disasters or any kind of um, catastrophe is looming, supplies run out, completely gone in a matter of hours. There's a run on the grocery stores and and places where people get supplies. They're gone. Pharmacies within days. Any kind of medicine that you're going to need, especially people who are diabetic, who need insulin, and those kind of things, life-saving medications that have to be taken on a regular basis are going to be in trouble unless they are fully supplied and have a ways to continue to supply themselves with life-saving medicine. Okay, hospitals are going to try to accommodate as many patients as they can, but eventually those supplies are going to run out. And staff is going to be in short supply. People are going to have their own needs, their own families to think about. So staff is going to be in short supply. Utilities, that's a big one. And I think that's one that a lot of people don't take into consideration when they think about prepping and getting themselves ready for a breakdown of societal collapse. Utilities are going to be non-existent. Electricity will probably be gone within 30 to 60 days. There will be no electricity. There'll be no running water. There'll be no gas. There won't be anybody picking up the garbage and garbage is gonna accumulate just like any other time, right? There'll be nobody to pick that up. So that's gonna sit. We know what happened when there's unsanitary conditions on a mass scale. That's when disease and those kind of things set in. There's going to be no sewage. If there's no running water, your toilets are not going to work. So what are you going to do with solid waste? Public safety is the next thing to go. You know, cops got better things to do with protecting their own families and their own livelihood than to try to uh, deal with civil unrest, which will be on a massive scale. That's going to escalate. There'll be no law and order. People are going to be trying to obtain the supplies that they need by any means necessary. It's going to be every person for themselves. It has to be. Society will stop being civil. Little groups will start and people will start to try to find the survival that they need 
and they're going to do that by any means necessary. So you need to think about that as you're preparing and prepping. And sadly to say, if something like that happens on a global scale, the majority of people on this planet will probably not survive past the first 90 days. There's going to be just too many services that we have come to depend on that will just not be there. People won't have the the drugs they need to survive. They won't have the food they need to survive. Uh, When disease sets in, which it will because of unsanitary conditions, they won't have the medicine to survive. Big urban centers uh, in the middle of cities, those kind of things, that's going to be the worst. So if you're not out into rural areas or best out into the country, out into nature, and most importantly, if you don't know how to survive during those times, then you're going to seriously be in trouble. So your silver, all the silver that you put away, gold, whatever precious metals you have for barter, will be totally useless during that time. People won't care about your silver for their food because what they have will have to be for them and their loved ones, their family. Uh, They will not be in any mood to trade for hunks of metal. That's just not going to be part of it. When we talk about precious metals in prepping, we're talking about after that has run its course. Things are starting to be a little more safe for us to deal with each other on a personal level again. That's the time we're talking about needing your precious metals, needing your silver bullion. Uh, And if we have survived to that point, then we have already, we've already, we already understand the importance of precious metals and how they're going to be used because eventually society will come back. It has to. We are social beings. We're going to have to socialize to survive. Uh, We need to come up with a system of barter so that we can accommodate each other. I'm not a, a blacksmith. I don't know how to forge tools that I may need to garden. I have chickens, goats, what have you. You have chickens, goats, what have you. So there's nothing I have that you don't already have. So we have to have something with value that we both agree has value that I can trade with you that is not perishable. That's not going to eventually either be consumed or used up. And that would be precious metals. But this is where your three nines fine comes in. The 90% silver we use to survive to get the things we need to survive. That's trade, that's barter that we're using to um, to kind of deal with each other. But our three nines and gold that we've put away is how we maintain our wealth. This is how we rebuild society. This is how we start again. But that's what your three nines is for. So you're protecting your wealth with your 90% silver. Junk silver, constitutional silver, however you want to look at it, 90% silver, it's already ready-made, it's already recognized. It's, we're already geared to accept that type of coinage as trade. And so that's what we'll use. You know, That is going to be key in surviving in a post-apocalyptic um, world. And the person with the most put away, the person who has prepped the most with supplies and of course, Uh, Precious metals are going to be the ones who not only survive, but thrive when we rebuild society. At least that's how we look at it. Now, keep in mind, all of this is just hypothetical. Um, I totally plan to have my my silver and all the other provisions that I put aside for survival to outlast me. I I totally plan on leaving that to the next generation behind me because I think I will outlive that. I don't think that society is going to come to that while I'm still alive. But I do absolutely believe at some point we are going to come to that. As we look around the world and we see what other countries are going through and the disasters that they're facing, would you be prepared with what you have now? Have you prepared for something like that should that occur? 
right? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about how you would survive if we are faced with such a catastrophe in this country? Which is a very real possibility as you look around the world and you listen to what's going on around you. Okay, so how is constitutional silver um, ready-made for that, like we like to say? Well, I believe it is um, it's fractional for one thing. It's already made fractional. In other words, you don't have to melt anything down or cut anything up. It's already fractional. So dollars, halves, quarters, dimes, and nickels. I mean, you already have all these things are precious metals. They're already made, ready to go. Well, this is why I stack so for two reasons. One is security. I like to know that my precious metals is going to protect me financially in the future. Um, it's going to be a hedge against future inflation. It's going to allow me to take advantage of opportunities that may present themselves in the future. And it's gonna allow me to um, retire comfortably, supplementing my already retirement that I'm putting together. The second part of that is peace of mind. Because I know if anything happens, like the scenario I just described to you guys, I will have enough precious metals, enough constitutional silver to feel comfortable in a economic crisis. And so we know that these things are possible. We know that they're possible. Uh, will they happen in our lifetime? Who knows? I have some age on me, so um, I'm betting or I'm gambling that uh, uh, my precious metals or my preparation will outlive me. It will definitely be passed on to the next people in my line to uh, take advantage of and add to, to uh, feel secure about their future. And I think we all are thinking about what society could be or what society could eventually become if things don't change. If things keep going the way they're going, then there's going, it's going to come to a head. And we don't know what that's going to look like maybe nothing maybe life won't change one bit but what if it does are you ready are you prepared have you thought about it and there's a lot of misconceptions out there about you know silver bullion uh during a total economic collapse or societal collapse and the, the, a lot of the misconceptions is that we as stackers only stack precious metal we don't prep any other way I hear it all the time. I'm sure you guys have too. Well, you can't eat your silver. You're absolutely right. We can't eat our silver. That's why we prep things that we can eat. <laughs> the whole idea behind a person smart enough to prepare for their financial future would totally overlook their, you know, other needs. <laughs> it's just, you know, hard for me to understand why somebody would think that. I don't want to scare anybody. These are possible scenarios. But I think given what's going on around the world today is relevant and I think it's important to think about these things. You know, preparing for the future is life. You, know, you don't want to be taken by surprise by anything. Now, being taken by surprise may still happen, but you want to eliminate as many surprises as you possibly can and you do that by preparing. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate the love you guys show me. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. Ring that bell. You can notify as soon as I put out another video. You know, let's look out for each other. Keep stacking. Peace.